Hi, it's Paul McIntyre. Welcome to another edition of In The Can, possibly the hottest day in Cannes so far this year. And we have a hot Australian advertiser, Louise Ears. What is it that you've got in your hands? Lots of gongs, lots of winners for the ANZ. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, I've got a little bit of our pride of, pride of lions here, Paul. Um, so two of the gold. Um, we've won six lions over the course of the week so far and um, across three campaigns. So really positive from across the marketing community, CEO down. Each of these campaigns took a lot of courage internally to make, but certainly the Equal Future work um, took many months, if not years, to get across the line. So Andy Luck, you've been here all week. I think, uh, you know, the AR, VR conversation is really starting to heat up now, both on the creative side, trying to figure out how you do the creative solutions as well as deploying the technology. So that's been, that's been kind of interesting. But really, actually, nothing in particular. It's the same can as it was last year, really, with a bit of spice. Not a, not a huge amount of change, same conversations. And, um, and that's probably a good thing, because they're not resolved. VR, um, it's all the talk in South by Southwest as well, obviously, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it's here as well. I think that it won't happen as a sort of perfect solution for another three or four years, because it'll take that long for technology to reach into the mainstream. VR's been obviously hugely dominant this year in terms of the number of submissions. Not as many wins, only one actually VR win that I've seen, and that wasn't really VR, it was a TV on a bus, very yeah. clever. News Corp, we've just bought a company called Deercrit, so that's exactly what they do for property. Virtual tours of property. So if you think about that, if you're renting or if you're buying a property and you want to do a virtual tour, I mean, that's completely feasible today. So why more people aren't doing that kind of stuff from a retail perspective, whatever it might be, commercial, residential property. Um, so I think you can see the trend coming, and Matt Baxter talked about it yesterday, didn't he? That he said last year you saw a lot of emojis being discussed, and then you saw lots of submissions with emojis this year. So there's, there's obviously something coming down the wire, and I guess the brands who are bravest will do it fastest and best. Louise, what have you seen? I think you might have even seen a bit of celebrity, a bit of Oliver Stone. What did you make of him? Yeah, so Oliver Stone um, in a small setting, um, mm. being interviewed by Martin Sorrell. Right. Um, more an, an intellectual challenge from Oliver, and he was really talking about macro um, political issues and how do we know what's the truth from what's being fed to us by the media. So lots of conspiracy theories, lots of how do you know it's the truth when you're only seeing one side um, of a political debate or a political story. On the other side, um, probably something more applicable straight away to the business was Keith Weed from Unilever and his um, session yesterday. And one of the main things from that was really talking about how to have campaigning brands rather than brand campaigns. And I think that's what we're seeing with our Lion wins, that that's where ANZ's taken a position on a particular um, situation or community issue and held that position firm. It is the most ironic conference you can go to because, you know, on Monday morning you have uh, Madonna Badger get up, give a, a, just a remarkable talk about her, her magnificent campaign around women and not objects. And then Keith gets up and shows women as objects. You just go, oh, like, oh, you know, like on the one hand, he does this marvelous campaign about getting your kids outdoors, yeah. purpose driven, like, make, get, let your kids get dirty. You know, prisoners get Have to spend more time. more time outside than our kids. Right. Something's wrong. Yeah. Brilliant, right? And then the next minute, you've got you know, woman being highly objectified in Lynx ads, you know? Um, Shub, I think you, you sort of made some observations around content and platforms. Yeah, I think we were talking about how much creative and content has been marginalised by platforms and tech. And I think really the theme that comes out when you, when you see some of the submissions here is that there's never been more opportunities to distribute, there's never been more ways for consumers to connect with content and your creative. And actually that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does mean that there's an awful, awful heavy reliance on the quality of the creative and the content. And that hasn't really changed. Yeah. I just think it's becoming more and more prevalent that if you've got good content, good creative, a good idea, it will cut through. And do you know what? Lots more platforms, good thing, not a bad it's, thing. It's just amazing how few of the big marketing technology vendors are not here. Blows my yeah. mind. You've got Adobe, yeah. there's no Marketo, there's Salesforce is largely invisible. Yeah. Oracle's got their data thing, but in true fashion, it's like, who would ever go in there? Um, it's like they don't understand how to relate to the content creators. Yeah. It's point. actually a pretty clear link. Yeah, yeah, and they don't, they're not here. It's like the one place you would come to light those platforms up, and they're like, I oh, no. It should no, be pretty clear right. that the whole thing's connected, and to be honest, that's, that, that's what comes yeah. out. The whole theme is it's really, really connected up, and I think the companies that see that take a step back, yeah. look at it broadly, and work out their place in the ecosystem, tick. Those that don't, 
Louise, going home, what do you take back to your business and your team from Cannes so far? There's still a couple of days ago, I know, but what do you take back? As a business, we have to stand for something more than simply our products. Andy, what do you take back? Oh, creative, 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 right? Like, um, it's just genius seeing the stuff people are working on around the world. It's just so inspiring. Couldn't agree more. The creative, you, you have to come, you have to see it. We're, we're lucky a few of our guys are here and I don't think some of them have seen the light of day. They've just spent all the time in sessions and looking at the submissions. And that's the only way that you know what good looks like is to look at good. Um, and then from a future and leadership point of view, taking all of these ideas down in our download presentation, sharing them with the Australian industry, we've got a responsibility to do that. But this year, I think there's some really cool stuff around the creative and the content ideas to share with people. Yeah, great. All right, it's very hot. We're going to call it a day. Thank you all for coming. And we'll see you tomorrow for another edition of In the Can. See you then. Thank you.